and welcome to Korea Today, brought to you live from Seoul. The head of the National Intelligence Service apologizes to the public for causing concern over allegations of meddling in last year's presidential race. While that was going on at the National Assembly, the presidential office was busy reshuffling. More coming up in the headlines. And how did the newspapers cover the Tongade reshuffle? We have you covered on In Print. A Cuban fiesta in Korea. I'll be back later to talk more about a recent Korean Cuban exchange. A robot competition that lets children use their creative genes and face off with their handmade robots. We take a look at their creations and the idea behind them. Endless hours in the sun can be fun, but watch out for the risks associated with too much exposure to that heat. We'll tell you how to stay safe in the sun live on this Tuesday, August 6, 2013. From Arirang News, this is Korea Today. Good morning. It's 7.01 a.m. on Korea Today. Thanks for tuning in. Did you have a good night's sleep? I can almost hear some of our viewers saying no, especially those joining us from <laughs> Seoul. We've been having tropical nights for the past fifth straight day, and it's just so hot. And mm. it's when this is when mid mid nighttime lows don't fall below 25 degrees Celsius. That's right, 25 degrees Celsius, it doesn't sound like too much, but um, when you mix that with the mugginess of the humidity, it does lead to sleepless nights. Now here's some ways that you can sleep. Some experts have said that try, if I'm you cannot, notes. Yeah, if you can't get sleep, then try these out. Um, you can take not a cold shower because it'll actually wake you right up, right? Uh. So take a lukewarm shower and refrain from drinking alcohol because alcohol is in ways a stimulant. So it may keep you from getting that good night's rest. And another tip that they have is uh, getting light exercises. Don't exhaust your body with heavy exercises. And uh, drinking lots of fluids helps also. Right, so. but uh, those of us in Seoul shouldn't complain because those in Jeju Island, uh -oh. they've been having 25 straight tropical nights. Isn't yeah, that quite it, something? It is very hot. So just try <laughs> to refrain from using the air conditioner because it does do a working on your uh, respiratory right. system. All right, we'll now go to Nayang Young for a look at the day's headlines. The tug of war continues as the two rival parties battle over a parliamentary probe into the country's spy agency. The main opposition Democratic Party convened an all-member general meeting on Monday, lasting well into the night but couldn't come to a conclusion on how to deal with the ruling Senri party. The DP party leadership will hold a Supreme Council meeting on Tuesday to continue the discussion. This, of course, comes after Monday's briefing session on National Intelligence Service officials in Parliament ended in a deadlock. This case is a political ploy created by the Democratic Party, which paid off its former and current employees of the spy agency in order to win the presidential race. Last year's presidential election was an illegal election. The NIS deliberately meddled in the race. On top of that, it was a corrupt election, which was swayed by the police agency's false announcement on its investigation results. Meanwhile, ruling party chairman Hwang Woo-yeop proposed a three-way meeting with President Park, DP chairman Kim Man gil and himself to iron out differences regarding the probe. Neither the presidential office nor the DP chairman has responded to his offer yet. A Korean air-operated Boeing 737 overran the runway while landing in Japan's Niigata Airport Monday evening, according to NHK. Local authorities say all passengers and the crew members got off the plane safely with no injuries. Japan's Yomiuri Shimbun says three officials will be dispatched on site on Tuesday to find out what exactly caused the plane to veer off the runway. This comes a month after Korea's Asiana flight crash-landed at San Francisco International Airport killing three and injuring 180 others. 
Korea's Ministry of Food and Drug Safety says no products recalled by New Zealand's dairy giant Fonterra were imported into the country. This comes after several countries, including China and Russia, put an import ban on the recalled products suspected to cause botulism, a rare foodborne illness which can be fatal. The ministry, however, warned Korean consumers who have already made an online purchase to avoid giving their babies to Care Care lines produced by Fonterra applied company Nutritia as they could be tainted. The presidential office of Cheongwadae chopped and changed a handful of its senior presidential secretaries on Monday as her new chief of staff, President Park, has tapped three-term lawmaker Kim Gi-chun, who has served as the country's prosecutor general and justice minister. Former ambassador to the EU, Park jun woo was named as the president's new senior political affairs secretary. Other replacements were also made, including the senior secretary for civil affairs and for future strategy. Strategy. Analysts say the moves reflect President Park's will to make her former aides take responsibility for a series of scandals and their inability to resolve pending political issues. They add the reshuffle shows the president's efforts to pick up new momentum for her political affairs in the latter half of the year. And good morning, everyone. By and large, the top story on the papers this morning is the sizable staff reshuffle at the presidential uh, office of Chong Wadae. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the story over at Chungang Ilbo. Its headline reads, Reform Warning, Park Geun-hye's second home base. And as you just heard from Hyung Young's headlines, President Park Geun-hye named four new senior secretaries as well as her chief of staff, as it is outlined here in the front page. Uh, Kim Gi-chun, of course, is her new chief of staff. Career diplomat Park jun woo was named as her new political affairs senior secretary. Former prosecutor Hong Kyung-sik as her civil affairs senior secretary. Former telecommunications chairman Yoon chang Bong as Future Strategy Senior Secretary and Che Won Young as Employment and Welfare Senior Secretary. He is a former Vice Minister of Health and Welfare. Now, the newspaper segments its coverage in three parts. One, that it was a change that was once at once dramatic and surprising when considering both the timing of the announcement and the depth and breadth of the reshuffle. Two, it says the change was at once a message that admitted to uh, the failures indirectly of her first round of senior secretaries and also served as a warning message that if the job is not done well, it can be taken away. And finally, uh, Chung Ang says the change was a sign of commitment to see through the president's goals related to the economy and the people's livelihood. And continuing the coverage now, Tonga Ilbo's headline reads, No results, no faith, half of Tonga they replaced. Tonga also notes that the change comes just five months after the president's inauguration, breaking her previously known style for sticking to the people she knows best and not opting for change. Meanwhile, the image shows newly appointed chief of staff Kim Gi chun there, who t- took to Seoul Square soon after the announcement of his appointment appointment to meet with main opposition Democratic Party leader Kim Han Kil, who lamented to Kim that the presidential office was not seriously taking this uh, seriousness of the current parliamentary stalemate, openly expressing his unhappiness that the president has not responded to his invitation for talks. Scooting over to Pyongyang Shimun now, it has a slightly different twist or coverage on the day's top story, putting the spotlight on the informal credentials of President's Chief of Staff pick. Now the headline reads, Kim Gi-chun of Chowon Pokjip Scandal, named Chief of Staff. And the sub-headlines capture that the former Prosecutor General and Justice Minister is also quite close to President Park as a member of her group of seven advisors, as one who interrogated her 
her mother's assassin and also one who took part in the impeachment trials of then-President Nong Lee Hyun. The article says that Kim also spearheaded the Chowon Bokjip scandal, which was a meeting that involved many prominent high-level officials in both the government and the business world to get then-candidate Kim Young sam into the presidency in the 1992 race. Well, we'll leave that story there for now and take a look at our business newspaper for today. Made a business newspaper's headline reads, Mide Asset to take over U.S.'s coffee, bean, and tea leaf. And this would be Mide Asset's second M&A of an American company after acquiring the Titleist golf brand. It has been known that the two parties, that is uh, Coffee Bean and Mide Asset, have signed an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, and are likely to finalize the contract sometime this month at the scale of some 445 million U.S. dollars. Sources from the investment bank industry say the company is set to sign the share purchase agreement this month and that the reason why the sum is not bigger is because the vast majority of coffee bean stores here in Korea are not co company run but are franchisees. Mm. Eunice, now take us back to the biggest story of the day, the surprise appointments. Now, President Park Geun-hye brought back a bundle of surprises from her vacation. Looks like she didn't get much rest there. That's right. It's uh, actually been kind of, I guess, uh, expected somewhat in the past, according to some uh, news sources, that a lot of ch uh, changes can happen when, when a president goes to break. Um, and in fact, there had been talks of a, a reshuffle or some sort of a revision to her uh, Chongwade staff upcoming, but that it would come so soon after her vacation, I think, did catch a lot of people off guard. In fact, Tonga Ilbo uh, cites one uh, unnamed presidential staff member running from his vacation uh, once receiving word that she would make this announcement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what an interesting atmosphere there must have been between the newly appointed chief of staff and DP chairman Kim Man Gil there, right? Mm. And the DP actually reacted quite interestingly, saying, you know, they condemned the appointment. Of course, the ruling Senri party embraced it. That's right. Uh, there is a lot of questions surrounding, I guess, Kim Gi-chun as c covered in Kyongyang Shinmun in part. And I think one of the concerns also is that he is quite uh, mature in age. And uh, there are criticisms that he is kind of old school. So will he be able to keep up with the uh, rapid changes that the president uh, hopes to implement? So uh, photograph and that expression seems to say several words there. <laughs> a little confused expression there. We'll let the picture do the talking. <laughs> and and uh, with that, we will wrap your look at what's in print on this Tuesday morning. Next up are your closing numbers from Monday's Market Action. And uh, we are, you're watching Korea Today. We're going to check out the weather and see what today's conditions will bring. Will this humidity um, continue and uh, will there be rain? We'll find out with Yi Dami, who's joining us from Gwangjin Group. I'm happy that she decided to come back from that kayak excursion. <laughs> Good morning, Dami. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I am back reporting live from Gwangjingo's Hall today. And yes, and yes to both of your questions, Young. We will be seeing both humidity and rain today. Uh, I hope everyone had a uh, good night's sleep. I know that the tropical nights are making it a bit difficult. I really wish I had better news for the weather forecast. However, it looks like the heat is going to get worse and worse day by day this week. Now, current temperatures this morning are at about 26 degrees Celsius, slightly warmer than yesterday. It is humid. Um, um, there is a light mist and also partly cloudy skies this morning. Now, throughout the day, we will be seeing signs of what we call squalls, which are uh, sudden signs of gusty winds accompanied with rain. Now, we will be expecting about 30 millimeters of rain per hour, along with thunder and lightning. So do be prepared. For me, as a matter of fact, I have been carrying both my umbrella.
umbrella and parasol just to be extra careful throughout the day. As for the heat waves, they are spreading uh, even wider along the nation. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers across the peninsula. Seoul's highs will rise to 32, Daegu will leap up to 35. Gangneung's highs will reach 34 as Busan, Gwangju and Jeju Island will all rise to 33. Now as for tomorrow's weather forecast, we will be seeing similar conditions to as today. Uh, the atmosphere is very unstable, so be prepared for anything because, you know, all of a sudden it can rain and then all of a sudden it'll be sunny. That's all I have for the weather. I'll be back in the latter half. Cuba is one of only a handful of countries that South Korea has no diplomatic relations with. But nevertheless, economic exchanges between the two countries stand at 100 million U.S. dollars as of 2012. But Seoul and Havana want to expand their ties to civilian levels. And our reporter Im Yoon Hee was at the first of our Korea Cuba festival that was held in central Seoul, right? Good yes. morning. Hola, senor, senorita. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yes, I was there at the festival uh, this past weekend. All right. Well, good morning to you, and thank you for joining us. Well, I have a question. Um, it seems that uh, Cuba seems so uh, distant geographically, and you mentioned diplomatically as well. Now, um, is there a large population of Korean immigrants in Cuba? And also, when did they um, first start immigrating there? You know, actually, um, one of the interviewees that I met mentioned that he is part of a community in Cuba that immigrated there in 1905. Um, about 1,000 immigrants went to Mexico first, and then they went, 300 of them went further on to Cuba. And that community is still intact today. Hmm. So did any of those Korean Cubans make it to the festival that you went to? Yeah, the interviewee that I met, he was, his grandfather is actually Korean. And so we actually share the last, uh, same last name. And so uh -huh. that might be related <laughs> somewhere down the line. <laughs> yeah, but um, the event was a pretty large event. They had a pretty good turnout. Um, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Korean Foundation uh, supported the event along with the Jose Marti Cultural Society on the Cuban uh, behalf. So the, in, the event turned out to be a cultural exchange between Korea and Cuba um, with a series of dance and music, which is really popular in Cuba. So let's mm. take a look. Cuba, a land of music and cigars, with a historically eventful past. The island country in the Caribbean has been occupied by various different regimes, creating the melting pot of cultures it is today. Well, when I think of Cuba, Hemingway comes to mind. I only know about Che Guevara from Cuba. Currently, there are no official diplomatic relations between Cuba and Korea, but the Festival de la Cultura y las Artes de Cuba translated into the Cuba Culture and Arts Festival, has been made in order to create a window between the two countries. The purpose of this uh, festival is to bring a, a small part of the Cuban culture to the Korean public. So uh, we want to uh, develop the interchange, the cultural interchange among our two countries. Music is considered the major source of cultural expression in Cuba, and the native Cubans were eager to share their passions with the rest of Korea. Cuban music derives itself from a fusion of African, Spanish, and Chinese music, creating a unique sound that became popular worldwide during the 19th century. Cuban music is popular because it's a fusion of romantic poetry with contemporary and traditional rhythms. Cuba is a major contributor to the development of today's jazz and salsa, as well as influencing dance styles such as Spanish Nuevo Flamenco and Argentine Salsa. However, Cuban dance is much harder than the professionals make it seem. It's very important to share with different cultures. We've worked hard and have made many sacrifices so that we can share our music and dance. We're very happy to be in Korea. A few of Cuba's top performers made an appearance, bringing a little piece of Cuba to Korea. The performances were so captivating, sitting in the audience felt like taking a trip down to Cuba for the night. Oh, 
Yeah, so how is the festival doing? How many people were there so far? Well, it's not over yet. Um, they did sell out on tickets multiple nights in a row, so over a couple thousand people so far. So oh, wow. it's been pretty successful mm. so far. And now that this Cuba-Korea festival has been es established, I would imagine they have more uh, future plans for cultural exchanges. You know, it did receive a lot of support this year and they are planning on continuing the event regularly. Uh, the Jose Marti uh, Cultural Society on the Cuba behalf, they were really excited about this event um, and they, want, they told me that they plan to continue um, to bring the event to Korea year after year, so make it a regular occasion. Mm -hmm. Okay, speaking of uh, Cuba, I can't uh, leave out the Cuban drink. Coke, rum, and lime, which <laughs> equals Cuba Libre. Now, that's a part of this <laughs> Cuban, right? Yes, it is a Cuban drink. Um, they actually brought a bartender. His name was Jose Ramon Moyasuri, and he is a very well-known bartender in Cuba, and he was telling me that the Cuba Libre is actually from Cuba. It was created in Havana, Cuba in the early 1900s, um, but they also had a few other drinks uh, in But that the drink event. is a yes. mojito, right? Yes, that is the mojito. That's one of the most popular drinks in Cuba, and it was definitely popular that night. They look really good. They look good. Telegrama. <laughs> oh, you guys know a lot that of That one I want to try. Guajira, <laughs> <laughs> it says too. It's like oh. we're revealing our true selves right <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, so there you go. No, you did not. Just there. drink while you were recording on field. <laughs> Drinking on the job, huh? <laughs> it was, well, I, I couldn't non refuse. He offered it to me. <laughs> yeah, right. so it was, it was a good event, and definitely the drinks did um, help bring out a lot of lively spirits to everybody. Mm. All right, sounds good, good Didi. Thank you very much for that. And I guess if we do have time, we can check out some cultural activities with the Cuban Festival going on. Thanks again. Thank you for having me today. All right, it's 7.21 a.m. on Korea Today and still ahead. Are you into robots? We see a lot of movies coming out these days with robots fighting robots. And uh, some assembly is required. Young students have gathered to show off their skills in building and controlling these robots. Come and watch a creative robot competition at the National Science Museum with Yi Tae-o. He'll be joining us on Korea Today. And in Korean traditional homes and hanoks, there is something called a sarangche, which can be roughly translated into a guest house. It's usually a separate building outside of the hanok. And uh, the presidential office of Cheongwade also has a sarangche, which has gone through a renovation to greet tourists and guests and visitors alike That's and right. show them a bit of what being a president and what being in the presidential office is all about. Mm -hmm. It's called the Happiness Hall, and this is where you go to find out more about key government policies and initiatives, and you can even meet the president, and you'll know why I air-quoted meet in this report. Take a look. The heart of modern history and where the presidential office Cheongwade lies, Hyojadong Jongno Gu. Here you can see the traces of all past presidents and experience Seoul's history and development all in one space. And it's known as Cheongwade Sarangche. The Cheongwade Sarangche used to be an area for the chief secretary, but they reopened the space as the Hyojadong visitors' room for the public. In January of this year, the place was renovated as the Cheongwade Sarangche, and now it's used as a PR facility for Cheongwade and Korea. The first thing you see when you walk in is President Park Geun-hye greeting people with her warm smile. This interactive experience hall is called the Happiness Hall and recently underwent renovations which concluded last month. It allows the public to witness firsthand the current administration's vision for creating a happier society for its citizens. Once you step into this hall, there is a culture ocean. Here, many culture fish gather around the visitors. And once a certain number is reached, the message of cultural prosperity, happiness, and hope appears. It has been well received by many for using digital technology to help people better understand key government policies in an easy way. And to one side of the wall is this bright area called the QR Lounge. If you scan a QR code with your smartphone, the 
plays various scenes from Korea's past and present on your phone. This hope pillar also allows you to take home with you messages of hope for the future. Not only that, on the other side, visitors can use a smart touch table to take a glance at the concept of a creative economy, as well as leading cultural contents, including photos and videos from Korea. It was good to learn things that I didn't know about the president's policies, and the photo zone also made it fun. There were explanations about government policies, galleries, and places to experience things, so I liked it. And not only that, you can also take a virtual tour around the presidential office. This place uses a simulation of Cheongwadae to make it appear as if visitors are walking around the actual compound. You can tour different spots in Cheongwadae and receive a guided explanation at each location. This is to allow the public to get a closer look at what the presidential office, which is normally off-limits to the public, is really like, without too much difficulty. You can also sit inside the president's office and walk in a street parade, just like the president would. And last but not least, you can even get a snapshot with President Park. Also at the Cheongwa De Sarangche is the Korea Hall which provides information about the country's culture, history, and prominent figures, as well as the Seoul PR Hall that gives you all the information you may need about the country's capital. I wouldn't mind taking a picture with the president myself. <laughs> not at all. Whether it's CG or not, right? Mm. <laughs> um, a lot, when it comes to government policies, even if you study up on it and read up on it, sometimes this could be a bit difficult to understand. So this kind of creates a user-friendly atmosphere. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe inspiration will find some young visitor, and we can see the a, a future leader of right. Korea. One trip to you know, one trip to that uh, hall will help you understand everything there is to know about Cheongwadae, right? That's and right. it's not it's not uh, inconvenient to get to at all. It's right off from Gyeongbokgung Station on Line Three, and you can just walk from there. Mm -hmm. And the introduction of Cheongwadae Sarangche will be uh, provided is provide being provided in four different languages: Korean, English, Japanese, and Chinese. So open to all. All right, now you have no excuses. You have to take a visit there, no matter what language you speak. And on Korea Today, still ahead, we are going to talk a little bit about heat stroke and heat exhaustion. You don't know the difference? Well, we'll find out. A number of patients who have been hit with heat-related health conditions has tripled this year. How do we enjoy the summer? But in a safe way, we show you how to prevent heat risks with oriental medicine. Children often have the wildest imagination and the National Science Museum put to the test how imaginative and creative these children can get, especially when it comes to making robots. And our Lee Tae-ho was at the competition, the robot competition. Good morning, Welcome everybody. Back. Thank you for having me. Yes, I was down in Daejeon this week for the second annual uh, Creative After School Robot Competition. And this competition is aimed for grade school students who participate in after-school robot-related activities. Now, what this competition is about is, it's basically students bring in their handmade robots and they compete against each other. So it was a really, really exciting event for the students as well as myself. You've picked up some robot moves there. <laughs> I have, she was I like, have like dance. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a bit later? Okay, All right, sure. let's go ahead and take a look. Today I'm here at the National Science Museum in the mecca of all things science, Daejeon. Today, students from all over the country are here to compete in a very special event. Let's go ahead and take a look. The Creative After School Robot Competition 2013 was held for three days starting August 2nd for the preliminaries, where a total of 480 teams took part. What's special about this competition is that elementary students using what they learned in their after-school programs joined in. Partially with the help of manufactured robot kits, children added on their creative ideas and built a robot of their own. Not only do they have fun doing this, it also boosts their creativity and imagination. And here, the students carefully inspect the robots they have built. It may be small, but the weight is in the front of the device, 
so when it moves towards the edge, even if it goes over slightly, it won't fall off. There are a lot of buttons on the remote control, so it's easy to manipulate and hold since it's shaped like a game controller. Students control their robots so that they carry out five missions, which include going up a hill, moving objects, and getting a golf ball into the hole. Each person moves along the course to complete each mission. As the students wait, they have very serious expressions on their face. The mission gives out points depending on how well the task was completed and how long it took. Based on these two factors, they receive a total score. It's fun controlling it with the remote control. It seemed like it was going to be easy when I was practicing, but now I try it, it's pretty hard. I wasn't good at getting the golf ball in when I was practicing, but it went well today in the competition, so I'm happy. It looked like so much fun that I decided to join in. Now this is a lot harder than it looks, and the students here, they're much better than I am. I think I need a little bit more practice. There's also the Creative Intelligence Robot category, where robots are ranked according to how well they are built and designed to carry out certain duties. And not only that, there were various robot experience programs and robot dance performances where students were able to use their imagination and creativity to their fullest. I think it will be a great opportunity to get people interested in robots and also use their creativity and imagination. You can learn more about science, show off your skills and also have fun with your family. After the preliminary round, the 190 teams that got through will take part in the November finals. Now students from all over the country are here in Daejeon to show off their robot invention. While they're here, they can also experience many different robot exhibitions. The future is looking very bright for Korea's robotics industry. For those interested in learning more about robots, this is a great opportunity to get hands-on experience and use your imagination and creativity. Now that looks like a lot of fun. I was a building block and a remote control junkie. Where do I sign up? <laughs> you know what? I think you're just a little bit out of the age range. No, for this. <laughs> no don't tell me that. You know what? But a lot of students, uh, what they can do is if they're interested in any of these robot related activities, a lot of schools offer many a diverse after school programs such as arts and crafts, as well as sports and sciences. And if you really want to uh, kind of look into this robot related field. You also have private academies and the best part about private academies You don't just kind of talk and discuss about uh, Designing robots and what kind of robot you want But you also get a very hands-on experience where students really get to build their own robots as well So and, it's a lot of fun, right? And children learn a lot from just fidgeting with those robots, definitely, right? Definitely, definitely uh, what a lot of uh, these after-school programs and uh, private academies, what they offer is these students, they learn how to do, deal with failure. They learn how to solve and kind of come up with creative ideas of their own uh, and work with other students to overcome these failures. And they learn a lot of teamwork and problem solving. It's really incredible. Mm -hmm. And it's not just Korea where the students can put their skills to, te to the test uh, in Korea, but they can, they have other competitions around the world as Definitely. well. And the most well-known robotics competition around the world is the IRO. Uh, they're having the 15th annual International Robotics Olympiad in Denver this year. And last year is actually held in South Korea in Gwangju, mm. where Korean students received a lot of praise for their robotics. So the future is definitely looking very bright for Korea's robotic industry. Mm. All right, thank you, Taeho, for that. Thank you very much for having me. It was a great experience here today again. All right, we're now going to go back to our dummy who's standing by at the Duksam Hangang Park. All right, we'll see what she's, going, what she's doing over there. Tommy, over to you. All right, guys, I'm back reporting live from Tuksam Hangang Park located in Gwangjinggu, Seoul, and I am ready to go camping right now. It is the summer break. A lot of you probably have found yourselves at the beach or, you know, in the mountains or at the stream. But the perfect one of the, if you're still in the city, then Tuksam Hangang Park is the perfect place to come. Because right now here in Seoul, they're holding a Han River camp 
and there are lots of great facilities that you can enjoy yourselves. So here at Duksum Hangang Park, this is just one of the tents that you can find. They have about 100 tents that you can borrow for families up to four. It does cost about 20,000 won, but still you can see a nice view of the Han River and it is simply just beautiful. And I also need to mention that because it's right next to the Han River, it feels nice and refreshing, no need for air conditioning. And um, uh, they also say that uh, this summer camp is being held both at Duksum Hangang Park and also Yoido Hangang Park. And over at Yoido, they say they have about 300 tents, so you can also make use of that as well. Now, and, um, there are so many different facilities, and of the one, I just want to show you right here the kitchen or you know where you can grill your meat and uh, make use of it now they say that usually the timing is at about some um, 6 p.m to 11 p.m when you can make use of these grills and mm, oh my goodness okay now i know exactly what i'm having for breakfast this morning oh it looks nice and ripe and juicy now here at the park, um, it, the summer camp will go on until August 20th, so that's about two weeks from now. Uh, make sure to put it into your schedules because, <coughs> excuse me, the smoke is kind of getting into my system. Um, also do keep in mind that every Wednesday they are holding a um, boat tournament. So if you've ever been to the Han River, there are these duck boats that you can always have fun with. All right, well. That's all that I have. This is your look at Duksam Hangang Park and Idami, Korea today. And a good Tuesday morning to you all and probably a great Tuesday morning for the South Korean national basketball team who went up against Bahrain in the round of 12 matchup. Of course, Korea looking to qualify for the World Basketball Championships for the first time in 16 years. Really need to get all the wins they can. Of course, with the, uh, the Asian Basketball Championships taking place in Manila, South Korea goes absolutely insane on the offense, with Cho Sung-min and Kim Son young putting up 14 points each as South Korea takes this game 96-51. to Of course, with Korea taking on Kazakhstan later tonight and India on Wednesday, getting those wins will secure a spot in the round of eight. And speaking of the South Korean national team, the South Korean football team, well, is still without a win under the helm of the newly appointed manager, Hong Myung-bo. Of course, a lot of things to do, uh, being done before the World Cup in Brazil, but for now, his focus is on the roster for the upcoming warm-up match against Peru. When manager Hong set to uh, announce the roster for the upcoming warm-up match against Peru, the big question is whether or not he'll bring in Park Ju young the South Korean striker's status still uncertain over in Europe, hasn't been able to get in any playing time, which puts manager Hong Myung-bo in a tough spot. However, with the manager hoping to bring in just two European players, Park might be the available option. Of course, no baseball here in the nation on Monday. So with the new week of KBO kicking off later tonight, let's take a look at the standings so far this season. Now, taking a look at the standings right now. Uh, first off, the Samsung Lions holding on to their first place spot as they take a three-game lead over the second place LG Twins. Nexon continues to struggle, but they're still in third place with the Red Hot Tucson Bears just trailing Samsung by six games so far. And now moving on to the bottom half of the league, the Lotte Giants in sixth place, but three games behind the Tucson Bears with the Kia Tigers falling fast. Already 11 games behind the leaders. Meanwhile, SK, NC, and Hanwha stay the same at the bottom of the league. And staying in the KBO with the new week of baseball kicking off later tonight, as I mentioned earlier. Let's take a look at some key matchups taking place this week. Now, it's going to be a big week of baseball for the fourth place Tucson Bears as they kick off the two game series against the third place Nexon Heroes at home in Chamshir. And the two games can switch around the standings if the Tucson Bears can sweep the series. And another big series for the Tucson Bears over the weekend as they're set to face off against the second place LG Twins as well. The two teams close in the standings, it's much more than a sole rivalry. Well, it's no surprise that some of the KBO players have been getting a ton of interest from the Major League Scouts and 
Well, if you've been watching the Samsung Lions games, there's a good chance that there were many scouts on hand. With the Samsung Lions closer Oh Sung Wan in his last year of his contract, many scouts from Japan and the U.S. have been watching him carefully throughout the season. According to one scout, Oh is yet to prove himself to be a solid closer in the majors and, at best, a middle reliever. And that's going to wrap it up for me. This has been SJ. See you guys again for your sports needs. Now, some areas in Korea, especially in the south, are reaching daytime temperatures of up to about 36 degrees Celsius. And in hot weather like this, you need to be careful if you find yourself getting symptoms of dizziness or even headaches. Mm, in Korean, we say 더위 먹은 것 같다, which literally can be translated as I've I eaten. I the heat. <laughs> right, <laughs> the heat. And to make sense of that phrase, we're joined by Dr. Park Joo-hong from the Kyung Seoul Medicine Hospital of Oriental Medicine. Good morning, Dr. Good morning. Doctor. Thank you for having me. Uh, just as you, just Min Jung said, we, in Orient medicine, we said it, we say it, Jung mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, take a heat. Mm -hmm. And uh, do any of you know the difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke? I think we commonly think of heat strokes, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, not really about uh, heat mm -hmm. exhaustion. They uh, both start with the letter heat, uh -huh. I mean, uh, yeah. the word heat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are somewhat right, but more specifically, heat exhaustion is the state uh, in which uh, a person's uh, deep internal uh, body temperature uh, arises from 37 to 40 mm -hmm. degrees mm -hmm. centigrade due to, uh, hot, uh, uh, due to hot temperature, and but does not uh, doesn't uh, don't have uh, any problems in the uh, central nervous system. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, heat stroke uh, arises from uh, heat stroke occurs when a person's uh, deep internal temperature uh, increases to more than forty degrees, mm. and it it experiences. Uh, the problems in the central nervous system. Okay, so heat yeah. exhaustion could be when your body is mm -hmm. overheating and then we could think of um, heat strokes as when it affects you neurologically. Yeah. Okay, so we'll mm -hmm. see how heat strokes differ exactly from heat exhaustion and also how it is treated in oriental medicine. With extremely hot temperatures across the country, more people are suffering from abnormal health conditions. According to the government, the number of patients who suffered from heat strokes in the months of June and July was at 341, more than three times that of last year. This extreme heat is not only found in Korea, but in other countries as well. Shanghai saw its highest temperatures in 140 years, recording 40.6 degrees. In Japan, more than 100 people died from heat strokes with more than 8,000 heat patients. When suffering from heat exhaustion, the body is unable to balance temperature losing water and electrolytes, which can then lead to exhaustion, dizziness, and extreme headaches. If this condition continues, it can progress into a heat stroke. In the case of a heat stroke, the body temperature hits above 40 degrees, causing you to lose consciousness. In the worst case scenario, extreme body heat can destroy tissues, leading to death. You get heat exhaustion when you're exposed to sunlight for a prolonged period of time and heat stroke is when you're in a high temperature environment exercising or working and you aren't able to let the heat out easily. Two heat illnesses can be classified according to the body temperature. If you compare a healthy person with a heat exhaustion patient, you can see the difference in body temperature. Unlike the normal 36.5 degrees Celsius, a heat exhaustion patient will have a body temperature between 37 and 40 degrees while a heat stroke patient will hit temperatures above 40 degrees. Then what are some methods to prevent and treat heat exhaustion and heat strokes according to oriental medicine? When you get heat exhaustion or heat stroke, it's important to get emergency treatment and stay out of a hot environment. You should also get acupuncture, moxibustion or drug treatment to improve circulation and stabilize the body. 
Acupuncture brings down the heat in the body and calms the nerve system by stimulating circulation in the body. Moxibustion brings out the high heat and stabilizes the mind and body, relieving the symptoms of heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Also, cold and hot baths called kaktangbap are also used in oriental medicine. For those who do not have a bathtub or patients who suffer from heart diseases or high blood pressure, a foot bath submerging only under the knee using hot and cold water is also a simple method of using kaktangbap. A cold bath can help the parasympathic nerve, while a warm bath can help revitalize the sympathetic nerve, which can help balance the automatic nervous system and assist with recovery. In hot weather, people usually seek out cold drinks, but when doing so, tea as opposed to coffee can greatly help. Omija tea helps reduce sweat and recover from fatigue. Measured tea helps reduce thirst. And a tea called Tengmek San tea, which includes ginseng, can help boost energy in the body. Eating the right foods according to your body temperature is also a good way to battle the heat. Heat exhaustion and heat strokes can come when unexpected, so it's crucial to be prepared and know how to enjoy a healthy summer. All right, doctor, um, what are some of the symptoms that uh, you need to look out for for heat exhaustion, and what are some signs of heat stroke? The big difference is uh, heat exhaustion causes headaches or mm -hmm. dizziness, mm -hmm. but it is recovered soon. But with heat stroke, we experience conversion or a seizure uh -huh. or unconsciousness. So heat like stroke that. would be mm. the severe yeah. uh, case mm -hmm. more. Uh, more severe than I heat see. exhaustion. Mm. And some people are mm. more prone to getting heat exhaustion mm. or heat stroke, right? Yeah, yes. Uh, children who are less than four years old and senior citizens more than 75 years old are uh, especially vulnerable to heat-related illnesses. And uh, people who suffer from chronic diseases or alcoholism or hyperthyroidism are also prone to it. Okay, so some people need to be more careful yeah. than others. I mean, doctor, I remember when I was playing football in my high school mm -hmm. days, we would get tired, we yeah. would get sick, nauseated, sometimes we'd throw up on the field, but we didn't really think mm -hmm. that much of it. But what if you are getting, um, mm -hmm. if you see some signs of heat exhaustion, mm -hmm. it can lead to heat stroke. What can you do if you see someone that are showing clear signs of it? Uh, we should, uh, the most important thing is mm -hmm. to call 119 okay, as so soon as possible. Call for help and immediately move to a cool environment and get a lot of, uh, get a lot of rest and uh, drink a proper amount of water or beverages uh, containing electrolytes. Hmm. And in oriental medicine, we have uh, two main um, emergency acupressure points okay. called Yepung mm -hmm. and Hapko. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yepung is behind the, the ear. Okay. And hapko is between the thumb and the first finger. Okay. And we can press strongly and, uh, before the ambulance uh, arrives. Okay. Yeah. This is helpful because it will quickly increase the circulation of energy and blood mm. in the body. So mm. it's very helpful. So mm. are there any heat-related uh, diseases that we have mm. to look out for, apart from heat exhaustion and heat stroke? Yeah, uh, there is one other heat-related illness called heat cramps. Mm. Huh. Heat, heat, cramp, cramps. heat cramps. Heat cramps is a muscular spasm caused by a loss of water and salt mm -hmm. uh, 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 following prolonged exercise such as sports, for example, marathon or football, or other uh, high endurance activities in hot weather. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we should be always very careful when we exercise in hot weather. Mm -hmm. Many yeah. people spend hours in, under the sun these days. Is there mm -hmm. a way to prevent getting a heat stroke mm. or heat exhaustion? Yes, uh, well, in hot and summer, in hot and humid summers, uh, we should only take part in strenuous activities in the early morning and late evening. And we should, uh, we should wear 
uh, proper clothing, which is loose and breathable, mm. in order to uh, allow the body to keep cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And keep drinking cold beverages, does it help? I see you brought some of mm -hmm. the teas that we saw in the video here. So do, mm -hmm. my question is, uh, do sports drinks help? Mm -hmm. It's my I, I've always burning wondered. question that yeah. I had. Do, do they, are they really good uh, for you? Yeah, sports drinks are a little helpful because it contains electrolytes. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, ice coffee or ice cream or beverage, ice beverage, it's not, really it's not helpful. so helpful mm -hmm. because it, uh, it causes the, it increases the frequency of urination. Uh -huh. so okay. it, it can lead to dehydration. Uh, yeah, it ultimately lead to oh, the so dehydration. Okay. Right? Yeah. Mm. okay, so you brought a mm. set of three teas over there. Is that there. for us? <laughs> yeah. yeah for, we, okay, yeah. so can you explain to us what they yeah. are? Yeah, reach it over. Mm. Yeah. There you go. There's a little pink one. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, the camera had a I'm, shot on that, and then you just took it away. I'm All right. Well, Tell us, can I please, this? what this is. It is omija, mm. omija tea, and there is sengmeksan and meshil. Uh -huh. uh, it is more helpful uh, to drink uh, drink healthy types of tea, uh, uh, which do not cause dehydration, mm -hmm. such as Sengmeksan, Omija, Meshe. This is quite yeah. good. You want to mm. try mine? Oh, try I'll, I'll <laughs> it's, it's quite good. I I'm not happy with mine. It was only good for indigestion, yeah. but I, yeah. I have a Newly bad. learning. Like <laughs> yeah, it also helps Newly learning digestion. that it's also good for yeah. heat stroke and heat exhaustion. Wow, this is, yeah. and I'll you said this you. is Omija. Yeah. What is omija. going on today yeah. in the <laughs> studio? This is good. This is good. Omija it may, is it good. It makes good bodily fluids. I see. And that was a little too bland, I think. Mm. Uh, all right. Nice. Well, um, these teas, these natural teas will definitely yeah. help. And one, yeah. one of the most important things is just stay out of the sun. If it's too hot, mm. just refrain mm. from right. doing too much physical activity. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right, Dr. Park, thank you so much for thank joining so us much. today. Thank you again. All right, that brings us to the end of this edition of Korea Today. Today is a beautiful, bright and sunny Tuesday morning, but uh, try to stay out of the sun. Mm -hmm. Don't uh, play in the sun for Not too long. Not too much physical activity, <laughs> but uh, we'll be enjoying this tea and we'll see you back here tomorrow at 7 a.m. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>